One of the more surprising aspects of esotericism and the history of the occult is just how positively tame it all is. With a few notable exceptions, most actual historical mystics, occult philosophers, and even necromancers are actually marked by their they're actually marked by their piety. Just because something is hidden doesn't at all imply that it's well, transgressive. Of course they push the bounds of orthodoxy to be sure, but the vast majority argue forcefully that they are actually well within the bounds of religious or philosophical propriety. Even the central work of a historical occultism, Agrippa's Three Books of Occult Philosophy, is positively incomprehensible outside of its strictly pious Christian worldview. This is something that I think more edge core occultists just seem to be kind of oblivious of. While a bit unorthodox, it's actually a work astoundingly committed to a very medieval Christian worldview, that is to say it's geocentric and virtuously Christian, if not a little infused with a bit of hermeticism. One of the few philosophers in history to actually center the concept of transgression was an early 20th century expert in numismatics, specifically in medieval French medallions. Georges Bataille would, however, go on to develop some of the most unsettling, even disturbing ideas in the history of philosophy. This guy makes Frederick Nietzsche look like Mr. Rogers. His philosophical project would focus in on concepts of sacrifice, violence, the erotic as a kind of limit experience, excess, transgression, all built on an ontology informed by ancient Gnosticism in which the base of all being, in a sense, was itself a violent destabilization of metaphysics itself. His work would go on to form the foundation for everything from philosophical deconstructionism to the metaphysical erotic torture of the demonic Cenobites of the Hellraiser franchise. I dare say there is, perhaps, no more sinister philosophy in history than that of George Bataille. So let's introduce his thought from the accursed chair to his praise of the base materialism of Gnosticism. If you're interested in occult philosophy, alchemy, magic, Kabbalah, or alchemy, make sure to subscribe, check out my other content on topics and esotericism, and also, if you want to support this kind of work of providing accessible, scholarly, and free content on topics and esotericism here on YouTube for free, maybe you consider supporting my work on Patreon or perhaps with a one-time donation. You can find those links below, and I want you to know that I appreciate your consideration of supporting the channel and the project of Esoterica. But now, let's turn to a truly transgressive thinker the philosopher of the pornographic and the profane, George Bataille. I'm Dr. Justin Sledge, and welcome to Esoterica, where we explore the arcane in history, philosophy, and religion. The literary output of Georges Bataille is truly stunning, from works of pornography that would make the divine Marquis blush, to economic analysis, metaphysics, literary criticism, and, and on. He was truly a maverick figure in the history of philosophy. Despite his rather marginal status, his impact has proven decisive in that he almost single-handedly paved the way for post-structuralism and especially the project of philosophical deconstruction made famous by Jacques Derrida. His overall philosophical project can be rather difficult to summarize, but largely centers on the concepts what he termed base materialism and the accursed share, especially how such concepts are cashed out in the domains of economics, the erotic, and the logic of sacrifice. 
I'll also say that his theory of religion is especially daring, and it's a pity it's not studied alongside the classics of folks like Rudolf Otto, Durkheim, and Eliade. But first, let's turn to his theory of economics, a relatively tame topic, although in his hands it gets pretty interesting, to see how the logic of excess and violent sacrifice emerge from existence itself. Bataille posits two orders of social economy, one restricted and concerned with the management of productive forces in terms of scarcity. This is basically what we might call traditional political economy from Smith to Marx. Another, the general economy, is marked by the management of expenditure or consumption and is actually marked by excess. The first restricted economy is just what most of us mean when we think of the economic condition of any given society. Scarcity has to be beaten back through the relations of production, with all social relations defined by how lack is prevented, exchanged, or displaced. Bataille argues that to consider all economic questions in terms of restricted economy alone, fails to account for at least two incredibly important aspects of society. It can't explain the origin of lack, given the superabundance of cosmic and biological energy, and it cannot explain sacrifice, insofar as it, given the reign of scarcity, appears to be a kind of systematic waste of valuable resources, that is, things like animals, wine, food, even the sacrifice of human beings, you know, they're kind of important to a society. For Bataille, only a turn to general economy can explain the origin of scarcity. Lack is, for him, actually produced intentionally by certain classes to control the others, sort of classical Marxism, and sacrifice, the restoration of the relations of eminence through destruction of the excess. As I noted, Bataille argues that general economy is marked by cosmic and, by extension, biological superabundance. The sun is an enormous nuclear furnace which produces energy on a magnitude which is effectively incomprehensible. Every second it produces double the amount of combined energy human beings have used since we first appeared on this rock 250,000 years ago. The Earth is bathed in a vast superabundance of energy which, even when consumed by all life on Earth, still produces excess energy as a kind of byproduct. Even sitting still, an organism's body will still overproduce energy in the form of heat as a byproduct of other biological processes. So-called primitive societies, Bataille goes on to argue, are not characterized by social organization around a lack in resources, but by how they consume what they have, but especially about how they dispose of this superabundant excess. This excess, which spoils in terms of food and other things, becomes poison if it's stored too long, but it can't be traded. It becomes a kind of excess, and therefore it is a kind of non-commodity. It takes the form of a burden, it's damned, so to speak, to be destroyed. Hence Bataille's discussion of this excess as the accursed share. How a society manages this excess is, for Bataille, the defining feature of a society, and he discusses at length the centrality of the Native American potlatch and various sacrificial systems as central to social production. For him, there are ultimately three natural mechanisms for a society to manage that excess. One of them is eating, one species consuming another. Human excess can be dealt with in this manner insofar as we are the top of the food chain, at least for now, and even through ritual cannibalism. It's also at work in this respect. We capture people and sometimes even eat them as part of this share. Death, of course, is the other, via sacrifice and war, and the last is sexual reproduction. This includes the non-reproductive sexual expenditure in the form of eroticism and the production of children, which actually kicks the can down the road by starting the process all over again through displacement. Sacrifice mediates the management of the accursed share between pure waste, which would be just death, and eating. Most sacrifices are not completely annihilated, and forms the central axis for societal identity and cohesion. 
sacrifice for Bataille is the cornerstone of society and not a primitive practice which civilization could or should eliminate. In civilized society, it simply takes a more barbaric and even suicidal form. War. No longer do we destroy the accursed share, the excess is taken by the rich in the form of capital through the exploitation of surplus labor value, so we reproduce society by the mass sacrifice of the producers of that social excess themselves, the, the working class. Capitalism for Bataille means human sacrifice at a vast scale that still never satisfies the desire for the destruction of the primordial excess. It's a kind of non-sacrificial decadence. Bataille's notion of sacrifices breaks with traditional concepts of sacrifice, which understood the concept merely as irrational. This is the idea, for instance, we find in Spinoza, where sacrifice is simply superstition. It's a waste of valuable resources and scarce resources to appease violent supernatural forces. This concept of sacrifice, the classic do ut des, I give such that you give, where sacrifice is understood as a mercantile exchange for Bataille fundamentally misses the deeper inner logic where sacrifice is management, again, of the primordial excess of the accursed share. To grasp this requires a deeper look at Bataille's ontology. For him, the non-human animal is radically imminent to its environment in that it doesn't interact with the world through subject-object relations. Only human beings, through the mediation of tools, encounter themselves as subjects as distinct from the world around them as populated by objects. Animal imminence gives rise to a world of transcendent objectivity through the application of tools to nature. Human beings can and do extend their subjectivity to objects. We animate the world. First, tools are thought of as extensions of the subject, though Bataille argues human beings extend their subjectivity to being itself, to the lost continuity of imminence itself. This subjectification of imminence comes to constitute the being supreme over all others. Within this realm of pure ontological continuity as immanence, all beings lose their individual identity and they can return to their primordial animality. They collapse into the vast oneness of being. This threat, and it is a threat, immanence destroys us as individuals and promise, it's also extraordinarily alluring to be collapsed back into the one, of our encounter with this supreme being is just what Bataille means by the sacred. Because the sacred is simultaneously terrible and alluring, it has to be contained, quarantined, as if it were contagious. This contagious quality of the sacred, the terrible and alluring encounter with the imminence of all life and all being, is contained in the general way by the festival, but specifically revealed and suppressed by the act of sacrifice. The human being is generally unwilling to throw themselves into the certain annihilation of self-sacrifice, but through the death of a substitute, one can both encounter the pure imminence of life or being. Death in this form of killing actually reduces an animal to bare life by destroying everything transcendent about it, everything which led it to be an object, leaving behind the pure life, according to Bataille, of death and dying. But it also quarantines this encounter with imminence through the fastidious system of rules which govern when, how, and who may do the actual sacrifice inside of the structure of the festival. The sacrifice manages the accursed share by systematically purging it as a way of allowing for and denying an encounter with the imminence of pure being. Bataille argues that the sacrifice here has three features in this process. The first is that the temporality of the sacrifice is radically that of the moment in which past and future compress into a kind of eternal present. 
Sacrifice knows only the present, the temporality of the moment. Secondly, it mediates between utility, the sacrifice is removed from the realm of objects, tools, and means in relation in the moment of the sacrifice, and waste. A pure sacrifice is totally destroyed, though parts of it can be used for other sacred or holy sectors of the population, themselves cut off from the realm of the mundane, that is to say the world of subject-object relations. Third, the sacrifice acts to mediate between radical intimacy, the disruption of the individual through the collapse of subject-object relations, and alienation, the strict separation of objects as orphaned in the realm of cold, indifferent objectivity. To summarize this, sacrifice is for Bataille the use of the accursed share, the necessarily produced excess of a society, to encounter the sacred eminence of pure being, without falling back into animality or complete self-destruction. Or, as he puts it, sacrifice is the production of the sacred. Given all this, it's unsurprising why his philosophy and pornography ceaselessly orbit notions of violence, pain, and excess as all quasi-mystical. They are at the limit of experience whereby one sacrifices a self or oneself as enmeshed in the subject-object relations for the joy, the jouissance of annihilation itself. Sacrifice from the destruction of the accursed share in the festival to the limit experience of pure eroticism is for Bataille the only way to the sacred. But note here, None of this includes anything even remotely spiritual or otherworldly. Bataille's project utterly rejects anything that one might consider supernatural. In fact, his conception of materialism was so radical that he felt that both Marxist dialectical materialism and positivist scientific materialism still retained too much in the way of idealism. He even argued they weren't really materialist enough. Here he pioneered the concept of base materialism, perhaps one of the most radical ontologies in the history of philosophy. He argues that all hitherto materialisms had simply not gone far enough. Scientific materialism was simply an inversion of Christian Platonic metaphysics and simply set in opposition to the concept of spirit. Matter was never really defined. Here, material was forever doomed to simply be cast as non-spirit and was thus metaphysically parasitic on the Platonism that it sought to reject. Marxist dialectical materialism was avowedly an inversion of Hegelian idealism and never dispensed with the inherently non-materialist teleology, this kind of teleological idealism of concepts like the cunning of reason. Thus, these materialisms fail to be true materialisms, according to Bataille. To develop such a concept, he actually turns to an unlikely source of inspiration, ancient Gnosticism. Now, to be clear, these concepts were developed largely in the 1930s, decades before the discovery of the Nag Hammadi Library revolutionized our conception of what Gnosticism was historically. In fact, Bataille's concept of Gnosticism is much more conceptual than it is historical. For Bataille, Gnostic dualism was truly a radical break with all philosophies in history. Unlike metaphysics that held that physical reality was somehow an illusion, the Gnostics held that it was profoundly real, having been created by a demonically evil demiurge. In fact, physical reality was suffused with evil in precisely by lamenting the horrible, evil reality of matter, the Gnostics alone grasped materialism best, even if they sought to escape it. But Bataille sought to take this metaphysics beyond this kind of dualism. For him, any dualism or binary logic, such as matter and spirit, implied a third term which grounds both but is explicable by neither. This third term is an other which makes logic, any logic, possible, but is itself destructive of any attempt to grasp it logically. It's outside of the logic. 
It is a pure other, pure ontological difference, a base outside all being and becoming. This is Bataille's base materialism. It's a groundless matter of seething, violent difference. Hence, it certainly isn't matter in any conceivable notion. In fact, it's inconceivable in and of itself, though he probably maintains the use of the word materialism here to ensure that there's nothing spiritual or ideal about it either. It's certainly not God or spirit, mind, the one, Brahma, or anything like that. As you can probably see, at least from my continental philosophy folks out there, this is the ground floor for the metaphysics of deconstruction and Derrida, the thinking of difference and Deleuze, and the philosophy of excess over there in Foucault land. Bataille's philosophical project contains a great deal, a great deal of what's going to become post-structuralism in the 1960s, although here obviously it's in Ovo, and I would argue that he's actually much more powerful and daring in his conceptualization of these ideas. Bataille's concepts of the accursed share, sacrifice, and base materialism are among the most transgressive and radical in the history of philosophy. His theory of religion is, to me at least, especially interesting, but sadly goes understudied and I think thus underappreciated. In fact, when I talked about his theory of religion in my religious studies degrees, no one had even known that Bataille wrote a whole theory of religion. Many of Bataille's writings have been translated to English, and if you're interested in studying them for yourself, I would probably start with the first volume of The Accursed Chair, or his volume on eroticism before moving on to his theory of religion. His most sustained writings on base materialism, including his analysis of Gnosticism, can be found in the volume, at least in English, Visions of Excess. His analysis of literature and evil is also relatively accessible. There's also even a television interview with him from 1958 on that subject as well on YouTube, which is interesting seeing Bataille getting interviewed on French TV. At any rate, until next time, I'm Dr. Justin Sledge, and thanks for watching Esoterica, where we explore the arcane in history, philosophy, and religion.